I'm just curious on YouTube channels. What what are some of the YouTube channels that you yourself look? Not that you watch because they're helpful for you to do your channel, but ones that you actually ones that you'd watch if you weren't doing your YouTube channel. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson is mm -hmm. one that I really enjoy. I've actually quite inspired by him. I find him very, very funny and very honest. You look back at his work from five years ago and he just nailed it, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's one that I've, I've really enjoyed. Uh, and honestly, history is something that I'm really, really interested in. Every night before bed, I'll probably just watch something. Like right now, I'm, uh, I'm quite focused on like the, the area of history of like the history of the Jews and history of the Middle East and that that sort of that area of things. So I've been watching a lot on that recently, obviously because of that conflict, trying to educate myself a little bit on on all of that history. Um, I, I love debates. I've, I've watched pretty much everything there is to watch. I'm, I actually learn from debates, which is which is weird. I'm not much of a reader. I can't. I, I, for some reason, whenever I like, whenever I watch debates and I have that robust back and forth. I can memorize a lot of what I hear because uh, I'm quite involved. But whenever I read a book, maybe it's because I'm just I'm poisoned by social media. But I can't like concentrate as well because I struggle to 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 like have the the intonation of of and I struggle to put the storyline together. It's it's a weird thing. Uh, lectures, podcasts, when it's just one person speaking, I I really zone out. I kind of need that back and forth. So I watch a lot of debates, and I found that I've learned a lot from that. Um, so that sort of stuff definitely debates and like Paul Joseph Watson and just history. I'd say that those are the things that I've really watched. And then the Daily Wire guys, I like to like Michael Knowles. I've always just found him to be a smooth criminal. You know, I like I watch Michael Knowles uh, Michael Knowles a lot in the past, but I stopped watching him once he became really integrated in Daily Wire because I cannot stand the over commercialization. It just drives me crazy. Yeah. Like three, four years ago, you could just watch a YouTube video of Michael Knows and th that was it. Now it's like a Ben Shapiro video, just the hawking and pitching crap all the time. I just, you know, he's got interesting opinions and I like him, but there's plenty of other channels that have the same opinions that don't have to be sold insurance or VPNs or everything. I just, I just, you know, but I like, yeah. I, he'd be a cool guy to hang out with. I mean, I like his personality. I, I'm not a big Ben Shapiro person. I can agree with positions that Ben Shapiro has, but I would not want to be stuck on a desert island with Ben Shapiro. Yeah, I no, I'm, I'm a little bit the same, actually. I, I've moved much more towards guys like Jimmy Dore, and I've even been enjoying the work of Jackson Hinkle recently, but he, he's he gotten kicked off YouTube now. I don't know if you've seen that. but No, I follow, um, he, I follow Jackson from when he had, like, very few YouTube subscribers, and you know, he loses me on some things, but I just yeah. always wonder how much of it is just a show and how much of it he really believes because some of it some is people are good like that. Some people can manipulate. It's not my tactic because I don't really want to get myself into a situation where I, I, I don't believe what I say fundamentally. Uh, I, but I think the whole MAGA communist thing that he does, it, it just it fundamentally doesn't make sense. Well, also when he, it's essentially when he, says, yeah. when he says favorable things about Joseph Stalin, I mean that's really just ridiculous. I mean, it's just, yeah, it shows yeah. it just shows ignorance because you know he, he's saying he, he's pro Russian, and I don't mean pro Russian in the in the Ukrainian war situation. I mean just in general and everything. Uh, you know, Joseph Stalin killed more Russian people than any human being that's ever lived. So yeah. I don't think he's pro Russian and pro Joseph Stalin. You know what I think is happening there? Just really quickly, like I think that there's another undertone there. Like I like to look at these things practically and, and think, why is that popular? Why is he saying that to get X reaction? Why are we seeing more of that these days where people are saying, oh, I love that guy because he was a strong leader. I think that there's just such a weakness and just uh, they're just so flaccid, these leaders in, in the West. Like you look at guys like Justin Trudeau and Joe Biden and, and then it almost makes you yearn for something that is stronger. It makes people yearn for like a leader that is that is actually going to be, uh, and and then and then when you take that to to its extreme, you get people saying, "God, like Joseph Stalin was such a good leader because like yeah, he killed oh, 40, 50, maybe a hundred million people. It could have been a hundred million, but he was such a strong leader. That's what we need right now." <laughs> you know, Bi Biden is weak because he's senile and he's corrupt. Trudeau to me is scary because he's a relatively young guy. 
And to have those positions, he has no excuse of being senile. He believes mm -hmm. those things and he's mentally cognitive. It's scary. It's frightening. When I look at Canada, I, I, I just gives me nightmares of what could happen in Western countries. Uh, yeah. Australia seems to have recovered from its COVID insanity, but Canada just keeps on going down the road of one woke thing after another. It's like the rest of the world sort of waking up to this and, and Canada keeps on, seems like they keep on going. I mean, there's some pushback. I know the conservatives are making some progress, but how Trudeau has been run out of the office like at least a year ago, I, I don't understand. After that Canadian truck driver thing, the guy should have been run out of office. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, how about you ever watch the channel Liberal Hive Mind? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm mean, I'm actually in contact with Liberal Hive. I watch him like every day. Actually, it's another one that I watch. Um, but yeah, I, I, we're friends on Twitter, and we exchanged a few niceties and stuff. So yeah, he's a yeah, cool guy. I like that. I like that channel a lot for domestic stuff. He is not a good foreign. He doesn't. I give this credit to him. He doesn't do a lot of foreign stuff because he knows he's not very knowledgeable uh, about it. Um, and I really like foreign stuff, but on domestic stuff, he's very good. I watch him all the time. Um, it's, um, it's a good, I, I like it and they're not too long. I mean, he gets to the point, nails it and goes, goes on. I like that. I like that. Yeah. How about, do you, uh, how about Mark? Do you watch Mark Stein at all? No. Lauren Chen? No, I've, I've, I, I've seen a little bit of what she does, but she's not. Wouldn't be the. Wouldn't be the my, my go to. I love uh, Hunter S. Thompson. He's one of my one of my biggest heroes, uh, because he just lived a life where he just he was a he just put put Gonzo journalism on the map, and he just used to get in the thick of things and do things that other people would just would recoil at the thought of of doing and living these crazy experiences. And he one of his great great quotes is I can't remember the exact quote. I'm going to paraphrase it, but. Basically, it's you don't want to arrive at at the end, you know, like nice and clean and ready to sort of go. Yeah. You want to get to the finish line battered yep. and bruised and, yep. and you know, yep. and yep. you want yep. to be able to say, you know, what a ride. Yeah, exactly. So let me. So you mentioned um, uh, the PVD, the uh, the valuetainment channel. I like the I, I, I like some of the stuff. Um, I like it better more recently than I did uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, it's mm. inter they have an interesting uh, mix of uh, people. I don't think we, uh, Russell Brand is, is great just because he's Russell Brand, but I started watching him when he just started. I, his channel has grown so fast, it's crazy. Do you, what, how about um, people, do you watch uh, Glenn Greenwald? Very occasionally, occasionally. Uh, I like he's, he's more on, on, on the on the rumble side of things. I don't really venture onto rumble as much as I probably should, but yeah, yeah he's doing good uh, things. Uh, how about uh, Aaron Mate or Matt Taibbi? Matt Taibbi, I'm a fan of him after, especially after the Twitter files. Uh, I I struggle to listen to him though because he's not a very good verbal communicator, and I actually really like value that a lot. I value people who can really get a point across. But uh, I, I'd prefer to read an article of Matt Taibbi. You know, it's really funny. He's um, a really interesting guy. I like lost track of him for like more than 20 years. And I knew him as, as, in an alter ego. And he's, you know, just I think he's like, his position has changed a lot just very recently, post COVID and uh, the Trump, Putin bullshit. And all. I think he's, sort of red pilled himself a little bit on that whole thing. Mm. But like up until that, you know, I think he was like the, the editor, at like Rolling Stone. So he was like, yeah, he was left wing guy. But I don't know him from like that period. I know him from like 20 years ago when he was the co-editor of a newspaper in Moscow called Exile, which was just an awesome newspaper that was put out by him and a guy named Mark Ames. And it, I'm sure this is why he never talks about it. He would be canceled immediately. It is so outrageous by today's Me Too standards. <laughs> this newspaper got into everything. They got into uh, politics. They attacked everybody. But what they also did is they raided every bar and gave very explicit details on the kind of girls and how much it would cost and what you had to do and what kind of things they would do. I mean, it was just totally irreverent. It was interesting to me. 
not because I like use the information to do anything, because it was so to me funny. It would, and, but it was mm, true. I, love it was that. I mean, you could actually go to a club and read what they and they had like little icons, so like measuring different things and and. Uh, but if you research it, like it's very hard to find. You can like find in Wikipedia a little reference to it, but it's pretty much put down the memory hole. But I can't imagine the people at Rolling Stone, all the people that watched him, like, you know, ever knew about that past. And, you know, it's how people, it's like people look back at like the founding fathers and they judge people on how they should have acted then by like today's mm. standard. You know, Moscow in the late 90s, early 2000s, that's a different world. And he was totally, totally not at all outside of that world of Westerners that was in Moscow at that time. And for people like in 2023 to be judging him on what he did then, but he knows they will. So it's why it's like very quiet. Uh, mm. not, but it, it's very, he's, but that paper, there was no internet. There was no podcast. There was no, it was written, which goes to what you're saying. And it was, it was sharp and it was biting. If I can find uh, if I can find something that he wrote from back, back then, it, it, uh, it'd be very interesting for you to read. Um, how, how about Milo? What do you think about Milo? I, I love Milo, honestly. Um, I, I think it was unfortunate, unfortunate the way he got cancelled. But the thing I like about Milo is that I think he took it well. I think there are a lot of people who are clawing and desperate to be back uh, into their sort of fame and he seemed to have been able to leave it behind him and then go on to a new chapter. And he was just vicious with the tongue lashing. And I appreciate somebody who can hand out a good verbal whipping. And he came to Australia and did it to some, some woke, ignorant journalists a few times. And it was just marvellous to watch. And I'd love to get Milo on my channel eventually. I think he's a really, really funny guy. When he first... Uh... And I also think that he's got a really good political nous as well. So... When he first was getting a little bit known uh, in the U.S., he did a big bus tour to college campuses, mm. and he would get canceled, like in a lot of them. And he was going to uh, Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, which is like the hotbed of what of of feminist every kind of feminist loony thing you could think of. And the whole rape culture thing at that time, it was even before me too. It was the one in every four. That's where all that came from is from Ohio University in Athens. I mean, it was just, uh, and so I'm sure he picked that school intentionally. And I drove out there with a couple interns, one from Denmark and one from the Netherlands. And I said, we got to see this guy. He's just, he's just crazy. And, and he's just, just, it's, he's just the world's greatest troller. Mm. And we, it was wintertime. We drove out there. It was terrible weather. It was a long drive, like an eight hour, an hour drive. There was people standing out in the cold. It was freezing cold. And like, because it's just on the other side of West Virginia mountains. And he comes out and he looked like, like one of the gay guys in the YMCA. He had like a tool belt on with hammer and tape measure and stuff with a hard hat on. I remember this. Yeah. Oh my God. It was so funny. And there was just the rabid feminist students on the outside just wanted just to have it was it i wouldn't have traded that it, it was worth the whole 20 hours of driving to go out there but yeah he um he definitely crossed some red lines and caused some problems for himself and i and and certainly like the more conservative people don't appreciate his i love humor and mm. to me i don't care what he says it, I just care if it's funny or not. And the guy would mm. make me cry, hysterical laugh. And and so, yeah, I I, I, I miss him because you don't see him. Yeah, same, nearly, I miss him. Like, nearly like you, like you did in the, in, in the past. Yeah, get him on your show. That would be a great one. I, I don't, I'd love to. Do you, have you, do you watch Dan's stuff at all? Occasionally. Occasionally I'll flick to it, but it's also Rumble. So when I go to, when I do my, thing on rumble him and glenn greenwald and guys like that i'll go check him out yeah he he's had well he was on youtube until i i don't know i think maybe a year ago or something and uh i, I can listen to him on radio because he took rush limbaugh's spot here in washington so he's on three hours a day um but i worked on his uh con congressional and senate campaign and he's another person that has 
his show today is really targeted at a specific audience. And I don't know if he's changed his position or if he's just moderated his show content to hit a certain target audience, because I know things from the years I was working with him in the many private conversations I had things about his religious beliefs and things that are quite different than today. And it's quite possible. He had a bout with cancer and a lot of things. It's quite possible. He's completely, people change, people grow and change. Mm. Uh, but when I listen to his show, it's, it's quite different than, than how he was yeah. 10 years ago, yeah. but he's incredibly uh, successful and he is a, uh, he's a fighter and he is a persistent guy. I mean, that, that is not someone that you want to, to go against in, in a physical fight or a verbal fight or in any kind of fight because he, he is tenacious. I can't imagine you would, yeah. 